Of all the cursed cards, Devastation is by far the least used and the least thought of for sure. With a kind of obscure slash really odd passive, to be honest with you, what does the math say behind Devastation? Marillus Action is a game and screen recorder that offers the lowest megabytes per frame, the lowest computer resource usage, and the highest FPS recording. Check the link in the video description to learn more. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a Paragon Guide. I am Silfen, where we are taking a look at the math behind Devastation. The quick TLDR, Devastation, it's basically a, it's, it's a good value two-cost card, giving you four power, and essentially within, you know, the first ten minutes it becomes eight power card. That's really good uh, in terms of just spending two CP. Basically, it needs three to four towers to become a similar six to eight cost card, but it also needs four to five towers to become a similar 10 to 13 attribute point card, not including those passives and actives. Basically, you almost need all the all the turrets down before the inhibitors. And basically, Devastation becomes a 10 to 13 cost card, including those passives, almost when Basically, those inhibitors are down as well, especially when there's only one remaining. Uh, really, around the 17 to 20 minute mark, with three to four structures down, it becomes a six to eight attribute point cost card. Obviously, that minute mark uh, is just a general benchmark. Really, it can totally depend on your match, obviously. Um, using kind of our the best benchmarks, I can ha I, I came up with basically it becomes a 10 to 13 attribute point cost card by the 2023 minute mark with four to five structures down and by the 32 minute mark hopefully when you have a, a, a inhibitor down or two basically becomes a 10 to 13 power card by around the 32 minute mark including those passives and actives kind of essentially guys it means it can scale to be a late game card by the late game it can as long as towers go down but if no tower if no structures are being taken down devastation can quickly fall behind other cards it really really can snowballing is crucial now what is the more in-depth look of devastation how do we come up with those numbers uh well that's what we're gonna go go through now if you don't if you aren't familiar with it or you just want an in-depth look and kind of see exactly how does it work how does it scale throughout the match so if you guys don't know devastation is a one agility one vitality death card really easy to get uh you just one agility one vitality call the week uh exoskeleton or coin master something like that really easy to transition to gives you four power which as we'll look at later is a good that's that's good stats for a two cost card and especially since off lanes go down really quick um by the 10 minute mark it's giving you eight power as we'll see that's really good it's cursed though it means it cannot be removed you are going fairly all in you're like i'm counting on towers being taken down so it, uh, this this card can scale over time and become those late game cards like i said in the tldr the the passive though is ruin power Gain four power per enemy structure destroyed. There are nine enemy structures, three, three, and three, three, three tier one tower or turrets, three tier two turrets, and three inhibitors. Um, and obviously, when you kill the core, game's over, so you can't really count that one. Um, so there is a scalability by, uh, you know, a multiple of nine. So when we take a look at some of the math here, it's actually fairly interesting. It's fairly intriguing and actually kind of surprised me a wee bit. If we look at the number of structures, those nine structures that we're talking about, versus the power that that devastation would gain from those tower structures being down, to the total power that the card gives you, including that four uh, that the card has on it, and then putting some game times on here that I felt were appropriate slash what I would think of as the ideal tower takedown rate for Paragon, just to be honest with you. Um, again, reality could be different, and your your games will absolutely be different. Games usually end around the 25, 26 minute mark. So, I mean, this is my idealized thing here. It may be totally out to, out to lunch. It's really situational, this card. Um, so, honestly, guys, this is just my way of looking at it. I would definitely, 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 definitely think of 
devastation in your own use cases, in your own average matches, and try to think of when it comes online, when these times are. Um, for now, this is what I'm going to do, my idealized thing, um, and, and make some statements uh, uh, about this. So. So, for example, one structure, the the your the the first enemy tier the hopefully your off the off lane goes down, boom, you get four power, you get eight power. Eight power at around the eight minute marks. Sounds pretty reasonable. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now at the at the two at the, you two structures down, you get eight power, twelve power already, just like that. Two structures down, twelve power. That's actually pretty good. That's more than Invader Mage. It does have a good passive, but etc. etc. Game time. Well, I put 14 minutes. You, I would probably be around 12 or something like that in reality. Um, but oh, I would hope it'd be there's a little bit of, mi of mid game shenanigans here. Uh, three, four, five. And as you can see, guys, it quickly gets up there. Like a six to eight cost power card is you know it's it's definitely around here it's not that far down the n the number of structures needed um to be taken down so as you can see 40 power is the maximum that devastation can have all the all the inhibitors are down uh you know and maybe a, an inhibitor or two of yours is down and it's a really l volatile late game 40 power that's pretty darn good for a two cost card maybe again you're going for red zone something like that as your third card hey 40 power put on red zone oh boy now what are some what are some comparisons that we can do here well as you can see pack leader here gives you eight power um and what this column here is is this is the structures required for devastation to be equal to that card um, a lot of these don't include the passive. In fact, none of these include that passive or active component. So that's why later on I'll explain why I say Devastation can include those passives and actives. So as you can see, a three to four cost cost power card here. You need a, you need you need only a structure or two. And if you wanted to include those passives and actives, just tack on two or, th you know, one to two or three extra structures on there. That's not that bad, to be honest with you. If you take a look at seven to eight attribute uh, power cards here, you can see here two, three, five, three, three, two, three, three structures. So basically when tier ones are down um, and maybe a tier two or a second tier two is down, so three to four, five structures, you have a six to eight, cost power card not bad at all now here in now here in the late game with these 13 11 12 attribute point power cards we're at the three four five attribute points uh structures down sorry needed so that these are the you know all of your every structure besides the inhibitors and you have the stats at least of a 12 13 attribute power card that's really, really, really not that bad. At least stats-wise, it does scale into the late game. Now, as we can see here, what are some statements we we can make here? Well, basically, it needs three to four towers to become a similar six to eight attribute point power card as we saw um, earlier. That's really not bad. Tier ones are down, six to eight cost power cards. Uh, you know, that's solidly in the mid game when people are putting on those six to eight attribute cost cards. Yeah, that might not include those passives and actives, but remember, you only spent two attribute points on this card. That means that you have others, you have other attribute points that you can easily spend to get maybe a 13 attribute point card that other people wouldn't have gotten the chance to do so remember there's a bit there's there are some advantages to going for these low cost cards that end up scaling and you know you have a surplus of attribute points now devastation also therefore needs four to five towers to become a similar 10 to 13 attribute point card not including those passives and actives obviously as a lot of those are really quite powerful some you just can't compare like something like red zone obviously or um you know unstable cyborg unfortunately if they're just way too powerful basically devastation can't um can't can't match it but for stats wise 
basically it only needs four to five towers. So even sometimes tier ones and one tier two or two tier twos, even even all even all the turrets and not the inhibitors, you have a ten to thirteen attribute point power card. That is in the late mid game, early late game, and you have a ten to thirteen attribute point cost card, and probably have another one because you have a surplus of, of attribute points. Really not that bad. Devastation though needs seven plus towers, so at least an inhibitor or two in 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 in, in a lot of these cards cases like amplification engineer is amazing. Um, Godmother is, is amazing for another reason. Um, stuff like that. It it needs an inhibitor or two down to basically, uh, depending on your hero, become a 10 to 13 attribute point cost card, including those passives and actives. And that is, oh, I, I even put in here educated guess. When you take when you take 36 and 40 power and you put it on somebody like a crunch ugh, or a shinbi who guys those they they are really good counters to 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 this meta right now especially with amplification engineer or you put it on just meta heroes right now you know what that power through abilities through through basic attacks can probably rival a lot of these really good top cards uh, that is my educated guess you know what i've been doing this for a fair amount of time um i think i could say that at, at, at this point so you know what with an inhibitor two down i do not think that devastation is going to be hurting you too too much honestly that's just my 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 very my my educated guess here so some conclusions then what can we say pretty much specifically about devastation well it becomes a six to eight attribute power card around the 7 to 20 minute mark with 3 to 4 structures down. Um, lately, I would put that minute mark a little bit earlier in my average game, for example. Again, you please guys think of your own average match and then put and then and then and then connect your average match to what my, my numbers are showing here. I would put the 17 to 20 a little bit earlier uh, because games are ending a little bit quite a bit early early than I honestly think they should. So, Devastation, it can become a 6 to 8 attribute point power card when it's kind of supposed to. It can. Devastation becomes a 10 to 13 attribute point power card, uh, not including those passives and actives, basically when it's kind of supposed to. And with a tier 2, or, or with, with 1 or 2 tier 2 towers down, hey, it becomes that 10 to 13 attribute point power card. That's kind of when it should. And when we scale it up even further with an inhibitor, uh, with an enemy inhibitor down or two, it becomes kind of what it needs to be at that point, Honest, honestly. So what is the weakness then? If it becomes the card that you kind of want slash need at the times, you know, that structures are down, what is the weakness? Well, if no structures are being taken down, devastation quickly falls behind other cards. So you need to snowball snowballing is crucial you need to really use that four power you get when you put on the card because it's a two attribute point cost card uh and nobody's getting four power from two attribute points um besides you with devastation and when hopefully the enemy off lane goes down at this you know six eight um minute mark you have eight power you have to use that. Your team has to has to snowball off of that. You need to kind of win your lane. If you're an off lane, if you're a mid lane, get some good pressure, get down the mid lane or the enemy safe lane. You have to snowball because those towers need to go down in order for you to get that power. If you don't, you know what? Honestly, it's kind of going to hurt you quite a bit. Like if you only have their tier ones down and they're barreling down your, your inhibitors, well, you know... For them, you know, that's 16 power that you're sitting at. It could be 28 power that somebody else is sitting at. And that is a lot. 12 power. Again, putting put put that on, uh, on, on heroes that can really use that. And the fact that they probably have more attribute points because of that. Because they can snowball off of that. You have to get those towers down. That is the whole crux of this. If the towers... If, if the structures are there that are taken down, devastation does its thing. And I think that's what this th this math shows. 
So it can be the card you want. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think that is the case? Do you think structures go down at these times? The times are fairly arbitrary, to be honest with you. Just think of when your average towers go down. You know, think in your average game. When do they go down? Do the, do the quick math in your head. Okay, all the tier 1 towers are down. I now have 16 power. Is that good? Is that what I need? Just, just think. When all the tier 1 and 2s are gone from the enemy team, and I have 28 power. Is that something that, that, that I want? Is that what I need? Etc. Etc. And then 32, 36, and then 40 power by the time all their inhibitors are down. Hey, honestly, not that bad. Let me know down in the comments. I would really like uh, to to know because Devastation really, I, I, I think it's underrated at this point from my analysis and really not used. I don't think, I used Devastation in a couple matches and I actually had people like, whoa, you used, you used Devastation? I was also using all the cursed cards um, and we weren't taking structures down so it kind of fell off. Again, that's why I said that's important. But anyways, let me know down in the comments. I'd really like to know. Amazon is the tried and true way of shopping for anything you need or want at the lowest prices. Support the channel at no cost to you by doing your Amazon shopping through the link in the video description. Please like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, share it with the community, and of course, guys, subscribe if you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful. Please subscribe so I can do it for you in the future. I have a ton, an absolute ton of content coming out in October, so please subscribe as uh, there's going to be a lot of helpful guides in there. There's a lot of helpful guides in there. Pretty much every day. Awesome. So please check the uh, the video description to, for my w link to my websites, all my decks and, and other info, my merchandise store, and of course my Amazon affiliate link where you can do, do your Amazon shopping and uh, help me out there. So thank you guys very much for watching. Until next time, like always, stay optimistic and positive.